Today is Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, and I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 63. And there's just three more chapters of Isaiah to go. And so let me know what what have you been getting out of these chapters of Isaiah or Isaiah as a whole. It's almost hard now to think back to the earlier chapters. It's a very long book of the Bible. And it definitely feels like it has sections. And yeah, some people have just made a comparison about how, oh, there's 66 books of the Bible, there's 66 chapters in Isaiah, and thinking of Isaiah as its own little mini Bible. Uh, sure, I think that that's a cool way to, to investigate it or research it. And I'm not saying that it is, but Isaiah certainly, Isaiah talked about Jesus and there's the gospel is in Isaiah in that Jesus came and fulfilled things and, and gave us the gospel that we know about today. But Isaiah was already talking about that, even though he didn't know Jesus yet. And so that's amazing. It's always prophecy is such an important part of the Christian faith and it's something that people can forget about, that there's all sorts of cool... The Bible talks about demons and angels and and heavenly battles. This is a, a battle of between good and evil on spiritual, in, in a spiritual realm that we can't even see. And Satan is real. And it's just so easy for people to forget these things and to forget that prophecy and the fulfillment of prophecy is so important. In the Christian faith, it can it can get muddied down, and people can forget that. And of course, at the end of the day, it is about loving one another and setting a good example. Treat your neighbor as you'd like to be treated. But it can it can just feed us spiritually and increase our faith when we remember that there is this huge spiritual battle going on, and that. There were prophets walking on the earth that were being instructed by God and, and getting inspiration by God. And it's spiritually spiritual nourishment to, to think about these things. And I think it can increase our faith. So that's why we should read the Old Testament. And that's why reading Isaiah is just as important as reading New Testament stuff. It's all, all of the Bible is good for instruction. And anyways, we can get into certain aspects of that later. But yeah, let me know. This is, I'm just starting to think about the conclusion of this. Only got a few more chapters to go. Okay, enough of me blabbing. Isaiah chapter 63. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have, tried in, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Man, my mind is going straight to Revelation. And you know how at the beginning of this, how I was saying some people study Isaiah as like its own little mini Bible. Hey, we're nearing the end. This is Revelation. The garments dipped in blood. And that's Jesus is said to, to have garments dipped in blood at one point in Revelation. Maybe that's the book that I should do videos on. Actually, if you haven't already, you could go check out my website again. And I've started a new project on the Book of John. Let me know what you think about that. But I'll probably keep doing Bible videos too. I think some people like the videos, so I'm not going to stop Bible videos. So maybe a revelation. Let me know in the comments. Do you like that idea? Okay. Verse 5. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury it upheld me. 
and I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk in mine fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. I mean, even here, it's like, is Jesus speaking here? Interesting. Like, as God. It, it just... Up here, with the, the clothes dipped in blood, my mind goes straight to Jesus in Revelation. So, just to me, it's almost like Jesus is speaking. But I'm, of course, I'm not sure. I, this is just, I just throw out ideas I have. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us and the great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness, loving kindnesses. For he said, surely they are my people, children that will not lie, so he was their savior. Yes, God hates lies. Every lie is from Satan. Something that I've tried to do after waking up and is just less and less have sarcasm be a part of my vocabulary. And because it's not supposed to be funny to lie, but that's definitely a huge part of at least American culture and especially TV culture and stuff, being super sarcastic as is thought of as funny. But we're never supposed to lie. And we're not supposed to take oaths either. And it almost sounds like, oh man, so serious. And man, isn't life just serious and dry when people can't lie and make jokes? And no, 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 no. It just makes stuff easier and more meaningful. People will actually mean what they say and say what they mean. And... I, I just know that certain people would find that to be uneventful, but I just can't wait for that when when there's no phoniness, when everything's real, and because I just have a hard time participating sometimes in this life because I I would rather do nothing than be a phony at what I'm doing. And it sometimes it feels like you just have to keep your guard up here because because of that, because I, I have that fear of being phony about doing something. Anyways. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, Moses and his people, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name, that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness, that they should not stumble? As a beast goeth down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord causeth, caused him to rest. So didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven, and behold, from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength, the sounding of thy bowels, and of thy mercies toward me? Are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways, and harden our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servants' sake, the tribes of thine inheritance. The people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by thy name. Interesting, so we have some... Us versus them, wheat versus tares ideas going on here. And such an interesting... I said this once before. Well, when I'm finished with this, I'll have to go back and look through. There was another chapter of Isaiah where I'm like, I know that there's so much more going on in this chapter that I just didn't pick up on. But, you know, part of this, you don't have to understand everything on or straight away. And some days it's good to just open up the Bible and read it and... That's it. Nothing, nothing bad can come from that. Opening up your Bible and reading it, even if you don't 
fully understand everything that goes on. This is another chapter to write down, 63. So interesting, so much going on here. I don't even know if what I said earlier made sense, but this is a chapter that you could study for sure, especially as it started getting towards here, towards the end. Very interesting. Um, this is one to really sit down and study, a chapter that you could get a lot out of, I believe. Anyways, that's it for this video, and hope you enjoyed. God bless everyone.